Sutra. Once the basic nature of this shimmering fluctuation returns to its original clarity, his habits will cease like waves subsiding to become clear calm water. This is the end of the formation skanda. This person will then be able to transcend the turbidity of living beings. Contemplating the cause of the formation skanda, one sees that subtle and hidden false thoughts are its source. Commentary Once the basic nature of this shimmering fluctuation returns to its original clarity, his habits will cease like waves subsiding to become clear, calm water. The nature of this small amount of light is such, such that after a long while it will revert to its original stillness and clarity. Once it settles and becomes clear, the original pure nature appears. When that happens, those kinds of habits will disappear like subsiding waves. The thinking skanda is like the, a rapidly flowing torrent. The comparison was made earlier in the sutra. Now, the analogy is to waves as in a swift current or a torrent. When the waves subside, the water clears and settles. This is the end of the formation skanda. The thinking skanda is like a gushing torrent whereas the formation skanda is like a reposer on the water. When only the consciousness skanda remains, there are no more waves in the clear, settled water. This is called the end of the formation skanda. This person will then be able to transcend the state of the turbidity of living beings. Contemplating the cause of the formation skanda, one sees that Subtle and hidden false thoughts are its source. When you reach this point, you still have false thinking, but it is not so apparent. It is hidden and obscured, not easy to detect at all. These extremely subtle, subtle false thoughts are the source of the formation skanda. Sutra Ananda, you should know that. When the good person has obtained proper knowledge in his practice of shamatha, his mind is unmoving, clear and proper, and it cannot be disturbed by the ten kinds of demons from the heavens. He is now able to intently and thoroughly investigate the origin of all categories of beings. As the origin of each category becomes apparent, apparent he can contemplate the source of the subtle, fleeting and perceived fluctuation. If, but if he begins to speculate, speculate on that perceived source, he could fall into error with the two theories of the absence of cause. Commentary Ananda, you should know that when the good person has obtained proper knowledge in his practice, of the still reflection of shamatha or concentration, his mind is unmoving, clear and proper. Within samatha, within samadhi, his mind becomes bright and concentrated, and it cannot be disturbed by the ten kinds of demons from the heavens. They can't disturb the cultivator. He is now able to have the chance to intently and thoroughly investigate samadhi and fathom the origin of all twelve categories of beings. As the origin of each category becomes apparent, as he exposes the source of each category, he can contemplate the source of the subtle, fleeting and pervasive fluctuation. He contemplates his elusive state, which is difficult to detect, the pervasive fluctuation is a subtle movement that occurs within the seventh consciousness. But if he suddenly initiates a chance to begin to speculate about that pervasive source, the perfect inherent nature, he could fall into error with the two theories of the absence of cause.
sutra first perhaps this person is no cause of the origin of life why since he has completely destroyed the mechanism of production he can by means of the 800 memories of the eye oak organ see all beings in the swelling flow of karma during 80,000 ends to dying in one place and being reborn in another as they undergo transmigration but he cannot see beyond 80,000 ends commentary the first of the two theories of the non-existence of cause is that this person is no cause for the origin of life he says that of the source of it all there is no cause which makes a person a person why he has completely destroyed the mechanism of production that is he has cut off the thinking skanda formation skanda is like ripples on the water as he has broken through through the thinking soda he has destroyed the mechanism of production the mechanism that produces the false thoughts have been destroyed and he does no more false thinking why did the text say earlier that a person who has no more dreams after he breaks through the thinking skanda is because he has destroyed the mechanism that creates false thinking he can by means of the 800 memories of the eye organ see all beings in the swelling flow of karma during 80,000 ends although each sentence has organ has a potential of 1200 memories the eye organ does not function in total capacity and has only 800 memories once he breaks through the thinking skanda he can see the events that occur within 80,000 and he sees beings dying in one place and being reborn in another as they undergo transmigration. The flow of karma created by living beings in this world can be likened to a torrent to the sea. He can see living, he can see beings swirling in that flow over a period of 80,000 great ends dying in one place and being reborn in another lamb at a lamb but he cannot see any of the events that occur beyond 80,000 ends so try therefore he concludes that for the last 80,000 ends living beings in the 10 generations of this and over worlds over the world have become so being without any cause commentary therefore since uh, he cannot see the events that occurred more than 80,000 great ends ago he concludes that for the last 80,000 ends living beings in the 10 directions of this and other worlds have come into being without any cause they just come into being by themselves without any cause or conditions they are born spontaneously sutra because of this spectacular he will lose proper and pervasive knowledge fall into externalism and become confused by the body, the body nature commentary because of this speculation this conjecture that goes off track he will lose from proper and pervasive knowledge form into external drawing an external form into externalism join an external sect and become confused by the body nature the nature of the body mind sutra second perhaps this person sees no cause for the end of life and why since he perceives the origin of life he believes that people are always born as people and births are always born as births that crowds have always been back 
and swan have uh, always been white. That human and gods have uh, always stood upright and animals have always walked on four legs. That witness does not come from being washed and blackwashed, does not come to come from being dyed, and that there have never been nor will there be any changes for 80,000 ends. Commentary What is the second view? Perhaps this person sees no cause for the end of life. The first is that he sees no cause for the beginning of things, and here he sees no cause for the end. Why? Since he perceives the origin of life, the beginning of all living beings, he believes that people are always born as people and birds are always born as birds. Believing that he has enlightened has and has attained from wisdom, he thinks he knows. What does he think he knows? He says, people are people in life after life and birds are birds in life after life. Crows have always their black. They are black to begin with. They don't have to be dyed that color. And swans have always been white. They are white from birth. Humans and gods have always stood upright. Humans and celestial beings all walk erect. And animals have always walked on four legs. Animals walk horizontal with their four legs on the ground. This is all fixed. Their witness does not come from being washed, and their blackness does not come from being dyed. For example, crowds are black, and but they weren't dyed black. No, also swans do not have to be washed to become white, and there have never been, nor will there be any change for eighty thousand ends. January nineteen eighty three. Disciple, since the person is able to see events that happened within twelve, uh, within twenty thousand, forty thousand, and even eighty thousand great ends, why is he unable to see people being reborn in other paths as they undergo transmigration? Venerable Master, that's an interesting question. You must realize that although the text says. He can see for 20,000 great ends. He is actually under the influence of a false state. One thought is equivalent to limit ends and limitless ends are just one thought. He feels it is 20,000 ends, but it may not really be that long. He is still caught up in a false state, controlled by false thinking. He experiences a total real state that in which he gives he gives pigs being pigs and cows being cows for twenty thousand year ends. Although he feels that is that way, his perception is not correct. If it were really twenty twenty thousand ends, then of course a pigs would undergo transmigration and would not remain as pigs during all that time. The fact that he claims that they do shows that he's uh, totally fake. Although he has that he can see for 20,000 great ends, it's not necessarily such a long time. That's only his own feeling. For instance, Mr. Wu from Taiwan said, Oh, I feel that I was together with so and so for the Sikh Patriarch's drama assembly during the Tang Dynasty. That's caused the being the kind of state we are discussing. The very fact that the house is to be the cause indicates that it is that it is not true. If it were true, there would be have would be would to be some evidence. And he shouldn't go around advertising himself. But if it is said to be true, how could he bear to leave so soon after being reunited?
connect with that person he has already put everything down why is he go back to Taiwan to attend to their business he made that claim just to confuse people those people unable to distinguish right from wrong exclaim incredible he must be psychic he knows that he was with person black in the town dynasty so what if you know that but you don't cultivate you still fall and become a ghost therefore you have to perceive things clearly it takes genuine wisdom to know why a person speaks a certain way mr and Miss, mr Wu saw that so and so had, was quite influential at the city of 10,000 buddhas and at gold mount monastery and he thought it would be very very dangerous to claim that he was associated with that for with that person that person silently acknowledged the claim which was equivalent to say right he and I really did study the drama together in the assembly of the great master the Sikh patriarch notice how that elevates his own status it is just like when another person came to the city of 10,000 Buddhas and talked about how we all supported him these cases are very similar but they used different methods to deceive people pay close attention to this as I said before the false paves the way for the true first there's a false which makes people all muddled and confused later some people who seek the truth set off in quest of the proper drama when people reach a dead end they begin to pursue a proper drama therefore that which is contrary uh, is the movement of the way that which is weak is the function of the way purity is the source of the turbidity movement is the foundation of stillness the way contains opposites when we study the buddha drama we must have genuine drama selecting vision so that we can distinguish true dramas false dhammas, black dhammas, white dhammas, proper dhammas, and heaven dhammas. If you can recognize them, you'll be all right. If you are so muddled that you don't recognize that was true and was false, if you jump to conclusions without analyzing things carefully, then you're in for trouble. For that reason, we should constantly investigate the Suragama Sutra, the couplet on the main entrance to our way place, says the other Damsaka Dharma assembly and the Suragama platform. Since we are in the Suragama platform, we are now investigating the fifth Skanda demons, and afterwards, we will study the perfect penetrations of the 25 sages. Then we can investigate the four clear and answerable instructions on purity. In this way, we will investigate the Shuragama Sutra passage by passage, section by section, until we study it clearly. Nowadays, the followers of demons, goblins, ghosts, and freaks claim that the Shuragama Sutra is false. Hearing them, people lose their faith and say, Oh, the Suragama Sutra is false. No matter what you say, is say is false. We should believe in reason. If a person's words make sense, we should believe them. If they don't make sense, if they do not accord with the proper drama and the precepts then even if what they say is true we should regard it as false how can we distinguish the true from the false the black from the white don't be so muddled that you take wrong knowledge and views as correct and proper knowledge and views as incorrect 
to do that would be to seriously invert right and wrong. You would lose your vision and become blind because you wouldn't be able to tell black from white. People who hold to wrong knowledge and views undergo the retribution of having no eyes because they have blinded eyes and uh, led others astray. Pay close attention to this. The law of cause and effect is very serious. It is not offered by a bit. From my experience, I know that we cannot do even the slightest wrong deed. If for me, we will soon have to undergo the retribution.